What do you call it when the person just does the same thing over and over in the same perpetual bad idea decision loop? I have no idea. You call it the first episode of Trashy Divorces. Oops, I did it again. This is my friend Stacy. This is my friend Alicia, and welcome to Trashy Divorces. You ready to do this? Ready to go. Do it. So, Stacy, yeah, you've got a pretty stinky uh, garbage can over there, just waiting to go. Who are you I, telling me about today? I You're dancing in your do, chair. I, this guy is one of my very favorite trashy divorces. I won't lie. This week, Alicia, I'm bringing you the story of a three-time divorcee, Ooh, okay. although he's in the midst of his third. He's a serial adulterer. Yikes. He's a failed presidential candidate. Ooh. He's a current presidential spokes buffoon, <gasps> and to top it all off, oh no, he is America's mayor of infidelity. I know. And his name is Rudy oh, Giuliani. Oh, what a... Oh, oh, trash can. Oh, yeah. He is just a piece of human garbage. So, like, I know about his trash canniness later sure. in life. Oh, it started early, and though. And he's like Mr. Page Six. Yes, he so, is. So, tell me, start at the beginning. Start at the beginning. Okay, partly he's Mr. Page Six. It's his own doing. He loves the media. Uh, in any case, so in 1968, Rudy Giuliani graduates law school okay. and decides that his next step in life is to get married. And he apparently grabs- well, that's what you do. Many people do. I mean, 68, though, is a pretty turbulent- Like, 68's a pretty big revolution- happening i'm surprised that's the year you pick to get married but well, if you're him whatever go ahead i mean catholic guy like i don't know it's time Probably, to yeah. do what you do so he grabs the nearest lady he can find who turns out to be a second cousin what oh yeah he marries no. a second cousin no no <laughs> you don't marry your he says they didn't realize <laughs> oopsie okay um, th- I may have a little bit of a gold star on this. I am from Alabama. I know who all of my second cousins are. Okay. Well. Like, that's just it. You know who you're. Funny story. Where to. How do you decide where to sit at the wedding? Bride or groom side? It was the 60s. You could sit anywhere. Jesus. All right. So, yeah. So he marries his second cousin by 75 75- I mean, I guess it makes deciding which family you go to for holidays easier. <laughs> oh, well, Lord. Everybody knows your name. Yeah. That's so, the truth. So by 75, they've separated. They're living in different states, I think. Okay. Um, so and seven years. Seven years for the first try. Sure. No kids. In 1980, he meets his future wife, um, a Miami TV personality named Donna Hanover. Oh, what and relation is she? Soon to be his wife. As far as we know, that's the only no. it's the only tie. <laughs> Do the Giuliani's have any cousins in Miami? I mean, so, I'm just um, saying. So having met someone that he's very into, mm-hmm. he gets around to initiating divorce proceedings from his second cousin. I mean, first wife. Who's just languishing? Who's just sitting around waiting to be divorced? I'm sure she's okay. living her own life. I don't. I have no idea. I hope so. Um, she is sadly a bit player in this story. Uh, she probably deserves better. Anyway, the divorce, though, which is concluded in 1982, is not the final element in that split up because Rudy Giuliani, as oh, mentioned, no. is Catholic. Sure. And so oh, he wanted see where this is going. an annulment. Yep. And so he goes to the Catholic Church and says, hey, by the way, she's my second cousin. Doesn't count. The priest who sort of ushers this process through for him. This is hauntingly foreshadowing. Continue. Go ahead. The priest who ushers this process through had not always been a priest. Oh. For instance, before becoming a priest, he had been the best man no. at the wedding in question. So, And just... then ushers through the annulment? Yes. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got you, dog. God okay. means a lot. It <laughs> means so, a lot to you. Yeah. So the Jeez. annulment goes okay. through. It's it's as scummy as it sounds. 
in 1984, okay. he and Donna finally marry because he's single. And again in the church because he's had an annulment, I'm Pro- sure. Probably so, yeah. Okay. So he then takes a job as U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York, and they move there and have two kids, okay. Andrew and Caroline. And he gets really, like, he makes a big name for himself because he, like... Rudy Giuliani. Southern District of New York is pretty hot. It's I mean, it's a, it's a big prevalent deal. then prevalent now. It's a finance big, crimes, right. all kinds. Of, yes, Rudy Giuliani invented the technique known as the perp walk, where you have all of the tabloid press show up when you know that the person you're arresting is going to turn himself in. Isn't it ironic? Isn't it though? Don't you think? Jesus. <laughs> wow. Okay, so he... I can't wait, wait, wait for that to come he, back around on the yeah, guitar. Yeah, this guy has, like, Shit. every reporter in New York on speed dial because he is just a publicity Meteor hound. Rat. Okay. So in 1993, he runs for mayor of New York, and it's I'm actually sure his does. second time. He had a very narrow defeat four years before. So he's been married at this point nine years, two kids, yeah. looks pretty stable. Yes. The cousin is off, hopefully living a happy life um, without having to be obligated to family events right and okay so 93 runs for mayor yeah 93 uh runs for mayor poor donna hanover like cuts these ads for the campaign like one starts with integrity that's the word i think of when i think of rudy or something like that we'll put it she used to like what did she do in miami she's a she's a tv okay so she this is this is yeah. a natural thing for her to do. It is. She is like a secret weapon. But it's weapon. just creepy. It's creepy in hindsight because. Um, <laughs> okay. Anyway, we'll put we'll put the ad uh, on our website, trashydivorces.com. So he's elected in, and becomes mayor in 1994. Okay. Literally by 1995, the New York tabloid press, which is an amazing tabloid press, is like, oh, yeah, he's fucking his communications director. What? Yeah, this like younger woman named Christine Latigano. It is all over the like people directly reporters directly ask them if they are sleeping together and they're like no, no, no. Giuliani's like we're really good friends, good colleagues, that's it. Had there it- is a report that on a trip to Jerusalem, which uh, he for some reason took her along on. So go to the Holy Land and bring your mistress. Yeah, well, she Jesus. was seen exiting his hotel room at 2.30 in the morning. Nope, nope, um, that's a good friend. And her office was in the basement, and apparently there's like a tunnel that connects her Secret office conne- to his office or some weird thing. Okay, again, foreshadowing. It, it's pretty terrible. Yikes. Um, so there was like this one time when uh, Rudy said he was going to go, told his wife he was going to go see their son somewhere. Sure. Never showed up where the son was. So Hanover goes to City Hall and is like, hey, I need to see my husband. And the aide's like, oh, he's in a private meeting in the basement. basement. And she tries to go down and the aide blocks her, physically blocks her. Is Donna a little suspicious at this point? A lot. Okay. So, yeah. So, Rudy and Latigano, like, they deny that there's an affair happening, but she totally, like, she believes it. By 96, she is no longer appearing in public with him at all. Okay. That's just probably and, and wise. She's, and she's reverted to using her maiden name. She gets some acting roles. Like, she's still, she's got her own life. and Sure. And it's all good. Um, but he's mayor. He's mayor. She's the first lady of the city of New York. And so she's probably not going to rock the boat. That seems to, yeah. That Just seems let me to... ride it out and get yeah. through this and yeah. we'll take care of it on the flip end of whatever you're going to do. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So fast forward to 1999. Mm-hmm. Um, Christine Latigano uh, has a new job. She uh, took a leave of absence to go care for her sick mother. Okay. Never came back to work. Married a golf pro in South oh, Carolina, got sure. uh, got a new hyphenated last name. And anyway, when she did return to the city with her husband, Rudy got her a job in the tourism board. So oh, I really like this story. Mistress does better. Yeah. Realizes I can, you know what? I'm uh, not staying around for you. I yeah. can do better. That's that's a benefit. Sure. And uh, yeah. And so she's out of the picture. But Rudy is out one night at a cigar bar. Oh, no. 
runs into a pharmaceutical Didn't salesperson. Didn't teach us anything. Apparently It's not. always a cigar bar. Or a cigar. Um, in any case, so Rudy meets <sighs> no, a no, no, no. pharmaceutical salesperson named Judith Nathan at the cigar bar. Ain't no party like a farmer girl party. And they immediately start seeing each other. Because the farmer girl party don't stop. Right. How old is he? In the 90s? I don't know. He's 74 now. Jesus. So All right. You can do that math. So. <laughs> I. Oh. Okay. So Rudy, for obvious reasons, does not want the press and his wife and his kids to know that he's having an affair with uh, this rando. <laughs> no shit, Sherlock. So. Uh, <laughs> He is, like, pulling some seriously shady shit. Like, he gets the NYPD to chauffeur her around for security purposes, but he, like, pulls money from, like, obscure city agencies to pay for this. And you've got to imagine, like, if you're the cop tasked with ferrying the mayor's mistress around. (laughs) Time out. (laughs) How is that more incognito when the mayoral detail... Shows up at Piggly Wiggly with the mistress uh-huh. instead of just rocking out a scarf and overcoat and taking care of your yeah, I wine assume, and hummus needs. I assume it's like an understated vehicle. Like I, I assume it's not. I don't know. Anyway. Sorry. Have, have, have I mentioned page six on the case? Rudy Giuliani what is an uh, idiot. He's a special kind of scumbag. He's um, a special kind of idiot. In May of the year of our Lord 2000. Okay. Rudy Giuliani, who is in the early stages of a U.S. Senate run, oh, no. calls a press conference. Sure. Probably going to talk about his plans for you would all think, this policy. Oh, yeah. How he's going to take on Hillary Clinton, who ended up being senator. That is not what happens. Uh, what happens? He discusses the fact that he has recently revealed that he's been diagnosed with prostate cancer. A week earlier, the New York Post had published pictures of him dining with Judith Nathan. So, anyway, at this presser, Dude Bro tells everybody that he's separating from his wife, Donna Hanover. And it is the very first that Donna Hanover hears of this. No! (sighs) He says that going forward, he will be relying very heavily on his very good friend judith nathan hanover responds oh what i see your finger in the air you say she's just a friend you got no this is bad he says this a lot wait a minute what's donna hanover doing she's just chilling out at gracie mansion she's at gracie mansion she basically comes out on the lawn to talk to reporters who have like headed over there to get her response and she just got out of a bubble bath like what the hell She (laughs) explains that it's been very hard to be married to a dude who's been boning a staffer. So she's cross dresses. She's not even like she's not even blaming Judith Nathan for breaking up the marriage. She's blaming the last girlfriend (gasps) for breaking up the marriage. Judith Nathan is just like whatever. What a mess. So, yeah, this guy, super, super scumbag. I don't know how page six didn't cover a murder after that. It, yeah, explosive, right? So this, okay, this kicks off like maybe the wildest divorce in New York City history because Donna Hanover goes to court and is like, hey, Rudy keeps wanting to bring his girlfriend no, to the nope. official residence where Nobody, no. I live with our young children. No. And I don't think that that should happen. And the no. judge is like, you know, That's... I don't think that should happen either. So Rudy Giuliani, the mayor of New York, moves out of Gracie Mansion and leaves his family there <laughs> where they reside until his term ends. What a scuzzbag. Oh, so scuzzbag. Anyway, uh, he ultimately pays her $6.8 million and she gets full custody of the kids. That's a lot of 2000 money. It's a lot. Good. It's a lot of yeah. yes, um, a lot of two thousand money. So he and Judith Nathan marry in two thousand and three, and all's well that ends well. Third time's a charm. No, oh. because Rudy Giuliani is a scumbag. Mm. In April of twenty eighteen, earlier this year, Judith. Wait, Nathan, it is twenty eighteen. I know. Is this year? 
earlier this year. I mean, it's 1940, but it's it is 2018. So this is current. Yes. Jesus. Okay, go ahead. Judith Nathan files for divorce. No. Rudy. Oh, let me guess. Has a very good friend. He has a very good friend. <laughs> that does not come out. Oh, and it's so, they are such good friends. Okay. So Rudy, because he just cannot help himself, speed dials all his buddies at the tabloid. So page nope. six has him quoted saying, in these divorce situations, you cannot place blame. It is 50-50. There are problems on both sides. <gasps> That's not really true. Heavy foreshadowing. I wonder where uh, our administration got that line. Do you think this was the initial spark of both sides? No, because that happened the year before. Okay. Okay, so in June, the Post figures out what the 50-50 problem is, and it's that Rudy's been fucking someone else. (laughs) So it turns out... That a New Hampshire hospital administrator named Maria Rosa Ryan oh, no. is his new girlfriend. A few small problems. Oh, no. Maria Rosa Ryan is herself married <gasps> to a retired U.S. Marine. Um, self-serving Rudy, in his denial of the affair, Oops, says, I did it again. She's a friend of mine. <sighs> so is her husband, Bob. <sighs> Talk about a cuckold. God damn. Like, what a. Hey, you see that bus over there? I'm going to throw you under it. Oh, so gross. Um, he was also careful to stress that he and Judith Nathan were, in effect, separated at the time. That the affair, that makes it fine. The affair he denies having. Sure. Was happening. It's fake news. Yeah. So, <laughs> basically, um, the tabloid sort of tracked. Rudy goes to New Hampshire to tour this uh, this woman's hospital. Because sure, I bet she's got brings great a, policy. Brings a TV crew with him because <laughs> he cannot help himself. Um, after, and televises the affair visit? Yes. What an idiot. He's just, he's just a He's scumbag. a garbage can. Yeah. Um, so after that little tour, looking at the hospital's like cybersecurity procedures because he's got a fake consultancy or something, they head off to a resort in Whitefield, New Hampshire, where the staff was appalled at this very old man and his <gasps> slightly younger mistress. <laughs> One server said, we were all surprised because he is really getting on in years and she was quite a bit younger than him. We were all like, hmm. (laughs) We were like, what? (laughs) Hmm. He also took Maria with him on a trip to Israel. Having stayed and traveled for my career and having stayed in a lot of hotels, you do not want to be that well known by the hotel staff. Hmm. You want to be known by the hotel bartender and keep it incognito. I mean, I guess he's a famous guy. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Um, in any Please case, continue. I'm so sorry. So he also took Maria with him on a trip to Israel to tour a medical facility there. This guy loves going to the Holy Land to flaunt his mistresses. Re- really into it, yeah. Uh, in a press release about the visit, the hospital described her as Giuliani's partner, which is a very civil Surprised way. Surprised it wasn't to good say friend. Mistress, his very good, good friend. friend. Um, <laughs> they've also they've attended some sort of like Iranian dissident policy meeting in paris they went golfing at trump's golf course in scotland together she's getting a lot of air miles she's sky married miles. does a husband come too i mean bob's a very good friend <laughs> so. what a mess in any case uh judith nathan had a very brief and very terse comment uh about oh, giuliani's tell me, tell me, tell me. denial of the affair she said My husband's denial of the affair with the married Mrs. Ryan is as false as his claim that we were separated when he took up with her. Oh. So she's been kind of living la vida loca since, uh, you know, April. And she had a sort of lengthy interview with New York Magazine in August where (laughs) just on top of the all the other shit she said suggesting that, like, 
Rudy's become an alcoholic and she doesn't recognize him anymore and all that. She also explained that the people in Rudy world who are kind of smearing her now because she's divorcing him sure. are the same people who did that to Christine Latigano. Like, just fucking blows it all up. Like, in any case, Rudy and Judith are fighting over a $30 million fortune. He's polit- up his fortune. Politics pays good. Honey. Uh, including properties in several states. Okay, this is not the topic of this particular podcast. Sure. But I would like to post it note somewhere that I am really curious as to how our politicians being public servants amass this kind of fortune. Yeah. We don't have to go into the road today, but I just want to post that, put a pin in that, because this season we're covering some people who yeah. dabble in and out of politics. And yeah. there's just inordinate amounts 30 million to what hey he's got a fake consultancy fucking mayor a fake consultancy he does <laughs> he was trump's cybersecurity guy <laughs> before he was trump's fake lawyer guy what a mess what a mess 30 million dollar i hope she gets every freaking penny because she Do- had a career on her own before she came into this right like she yeah. should get a penny no she totally should on the other hand I mean, he was married when she started fucking him. <laughs> like, it's tough to figure out who to have sympathy for here, Oops, but but it's again. not Rudy Giuliani, and it's really not Judith Nathan. Donna Hanover, no, poor Donna Hanover is who I have sympathy here for. That's it. In summary, Yowza. the next time you see America's mayor of infidelity lying to you on television, do not feel like you are special he lies it is just what rudy he does does he is a wow um do you want to jesus he is a trash can he do is wa- a trash can we should we should maybe rate our trashy divorces how many trash cans does he get sure uh what's let's, the scale uh out of five sure i'd uh i guess i'd give him a three since for the most part these have been like age appropriate mistresses what about the hotel with the hmm? Well, how young was that one? She's in her forties or fifties. Like she's not a twenty-year-old. Well, he's probably got a lot of drugs left over from the pharma girl. <laughs> you mean his wife? <laughs> All right, three, three trash cans. I'd go with three. I mean, I could be on board with three trash cans. Yeah, let's start. Not let's aware. Start in the middle. Not aware of any like kitty porn or. Any of that, but he's a trashy motherfucker. Like, oh, but just wait, because that's coming this season too. Oh, uh-huh. <laughs> I've got a little kitty porn foreshadowing. I can't even wait to uh, talk to you about mine because there's some similarities. I can't wait to hear who is who is your um, dumpster of fire this week, Alicia. Let's take a break, and, and come then back to I'm going to come back and tell you about the best tale that has ever been told about any trashy divorce it is murderous it's a high bar lusty divorcerous treasonous it has everything 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 in a royal trash can wow so it's so it's gilded (laughs) (laughs) hi i'm emily higgins and i host tasteless We are watching a topless woman with a very long ponytail do a spin kick of this guy. Tasteless is a movie podcast that pays tribute to the films no one else wants to talk about. You're not going in for an ambitious track through one person's psyche. That's not what you're crossroads for. That's not what you're at Tasteless for. In each episode, I take a highly regarded film and compare it to a less beloved movie I recommend instead. She crawls out of the plants, and maybe the snakes have chewed off half her clothes because now she has a crop top. Visit tastelesspod.com for more details and to find all the places you can listen. And we are back for Alicia's Royal Dumpster Fire. It's so good. Is it? Pretty much. I have you covered for every trivia pub night. Ah. 
It's going to be a little historical. A little bonus for the listeners. <laughs> a little bonus. There is an oft-repeated saying about this man and his trashy divorces. Uh-huh. To the tune of divorced, beheaded, died, divorced, beheaded, survived. Wow. Today I am bringing you the tale of the King of Dead Queens, Henry VIII. Bum, bum. I feel like we need we need royal horns now. He would probably appreciate that. Cool. This guy is legit a royal prick, but I really <laughs> like his wives. <laughs> well, all right. This story has everything. So we're Rudy Giuliani had three. This dude has six. Twice the fun. Twice the divorces. Twice the fun. Uh, however, they were not all divorces. Right. There were some beheadings. There was some, yeah. There there was some deaths. We're going to go through them all. Okay. Okay. Wow. However, this- And this is the six wives of Henry VIII. That's where that- This is the lusty, murderous, disgusting, I don't know. There's so many words for it. The lusty, <sighs> murderous tale of the wives of Henry VIII and the- predecessor of all trashy divorces yes the yeah the og the og yeah oops i did, <laughs> I did it, again. it again okay <laughs> so henry the eighth was born as a second son okay he was born in 1490s not important okay born before the turn of but his... but he's the spare in he's the, the spare in the heir in the spare scenario he's the okay. spare he had an older brother arthur that was about five years older and arthur was brought up to be the king. So Henry is raised with his mother and sisters in a nice little castle where he's being pampered and doted his whole life. His first big presence at court was at the marriage of his brother Arthur hmm. and Catherine of Aragon. And that's in Spain? Aragon is in Spain. It's okay. Castile in Spain. And Catherine is the youngest daughter of Ferdinand and Isabella. Oh, Columbus yeah. sailed the ocean blue. Columbus sailed okay. the ocean blue. Uh, she is a Spanish princess, uh, brought up her entire life as Ferdinand and Isabella are making alliances over Europe. She is brought up to be the Queen of England. She believes this is her God-given mission. She travels over. Arthur's 15. She's 15. It's blending the kingdoms together. Henry VIII escorts her out, presents her to court, it's a marriage. Everybody's happy. It's all great. <laughs> Except. <laughs> <laughs> so in the first few months of their marriage, this actually becomes very heavily contested as this was the future of the dynasty. What went on that night, as in did they or didn't they? becomes very important to not just that night, but for the remainder of the next few months that they were married. Catherine swears that she remained a maid completely. What are the odds? Arthur says to his buddies the next day, he spent all night in the midst of Spain. <laughs> so, okay. So, so male boasting is not a new phenomenon in the least. Okay. Right. So you wonder, Hey, wait, this is Arthur and Catherine of Aragon and they've been sent to go live in whatever castle in cold wet fuck whales what does this have to do with henry the eighth alas <laughs> arthur dies Ooh. at 15 oh. leaving catherine a widow oh my god she's been in england oh, five months she god. barely speaks the language she's a teenager who's a widow she's a teenager who is a widow and the treated like crap oh by henry the seventh he almost causes... That's Arthur's dad? This is Arthur and Henry's father. Okay. He almost causes an international incident by suggesting... Oh, sorry. Back it up. Mm. Henry VII is married to Henry's mother, Elizabeth of York. So a pa uh, Henry is now first in line. But Elizabeth of York, queen as she is, says, don't worry. We can have another child. She gets pregnant. The baby dies and she dies in childbirth. Oh, my God. So now Henry VII is a widow as well. I mean, I don't want to laugh at, I mean, that's a tragic story, but bad. oh my God. He almost causes an international incident when he suggests to Ferdinand and Isabella that he just marry the 15-year-old widow. He's like 50. Oh. Yeah. Nope. That doesn't happen. Uh, 
he essentially kind of jerks her around. Henry the Seventh jerks Catherine around on a string for the next few years. But it turns out that 10-year-old boy has fallen in love. Aww. Can you imagine who Henry's first wife is? I'm guessing his former sister-in-law. <laughs> his former sister-in-law, Catherine of Aragon. <laughs> well, you know, olden times. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Henry the Seventh passes away. When Henry's about 18, Catherine's about 25, and Henry has held Catherine up to be this mystique goddess of everything a queen should be. And he marries her. So, okay, so she couldn't just go back to Spain. She was essentially property of the of the English at that point because she... Correct. Contracts had been signed. Oh, my God. Certain parts of dowry had been exchanged. Women were not necessarily... Women, they were commodities. Sure, sure. Okay. For men's power play games. Gotcha. Okay, so Henry VIII marries her upon his So Henry death. VIII uh, becomes king, marries Catherine of Aragon. She teaches ha- him how to do everything. Now, he's been Mr. Sheltered in Mom's house. Arthur dies when he's 10, so now he's had eight years of people are watching me all the time. I can't have any fun. I can't joust for real they won't let me take any chances because what if I die? Henry the Seventh is gone. He learns everything from Catherine of Aragon. They live in a court of splendid love. It really does look like a love match. They're infatuated with each other and have balls and dances. And he decides to go beat the French at the Battle of Spurs. And he actually leaves her in charge of the country. Like there's an enormous amount of respect and love that he has for Catherine of Aragon and she to him. However, <laughs> there's always a however. <laughs> that's not what a royal wife can, a queen can love you as much as they can love you, but they really have one purpose. And that one purpose is to churn out the little ones. That's exactly right. So she, over the course of their marriage, does give birth to numerous children. Only one survives. Multiple miscarriages, multiple babies brought to term who pass away early. She ends up with one child, Mary. Not sure if you caught that name, Mary. So she's a girl. (laughs) Gotcha. That's a problem in those times, isn't it? She's soon to be Bloody Mary, but that is a few years, Years, a few decades down the road and a lot of trauma later. So keep her in the back of your mind for this. (laughs) Maybe your prayers. (laughs) That's true. So Henry, because he has numerous mistresses that Catherine of Aragon turns a blind eye to, one of his mistresses, Bessie Blount, does give birth to a son. So he, of course, says, this isn't my fault. I can bear sons. This is your fault. Well, Catherine's a little older, Hmm. is no longer of childbearing years. And, oh, let me go ahead and mention that Henry VIII really likes cosplay. So remember that cosplay event from when he was 10? Yeah. Now another one happens in mid-1520s, and this is the introduction of Anne Boleyn into the English court. dum 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 She has been being finished at the French court for years. She is maybe not the prettiest. But she sure uses what she's got. She is fluent in French. She is sophisticated. No one mistakes her for being English because she is so refined and so charming. There's a big cosplay pageant and (laughs) ladies in the castle. And Henry and all of his mates are storming the castle. And it's not important. (laughs) He falls in love (laughs) to the point where he goes nuts. The love letters he sent her are still sitting in the Vatican. Now, please let me tell you, he did not write love letters. He had ministers to do all of the work for him because he just wanted to be playboy king and joust a little and drink all the wine and play cards with his friends. And as long as he had smart ministers around him, he could just go have fun. Sounds like a pretty good life, if we're being honest. Well, until Anne Boleyn walks in and knocks it upside down writes her love letters in his own hand that are just sappy and sweet and wonderful. And she is the scandal of Christendom. Now, Catherine of Aragon is doing what she's always done. 
in turning a blind eye. Oh, did I mention that Anne Boleyn is one of her ladies in waiting? Oh, you did not. Hmm. So Henry VIII now has it cooked in his brain that he can have sons. Catherine did not give him sons. And maybe because of this weird Old Testament rule, he should never have been allowed to marry his brother's wife that they got the annulment for in the first place. I'm sorry. So Henry VIII, biblical scholar. Is that what you're... That is correct. He's okay. a biblical scholar. Th- that's lovely. And writes this Man of appeal- deep faith. <laughs> Man of deep faith. God, the Catholic Church is like not to be trusted on matters of marriage. <laughs> well, he's really going for an annulment. Sure. Now, whether he wants an annulment to be rid of, well, no, he wants an annulment so he can marry Anne Boleyn. Sure. Because Anne Boleyn hadn't given it out, because here's a little backstory. Henry had an affair with her sister. Oh, my God. And her sister conveniently was married <sighs> off to a man at court. Sure. And provided So she'd for, always be close by? Always be close by. Oh it was a, like, there's so many similarities with uh, your divorce. It's not even funny. But she stays really, re- Anne Boleyn stays really reluctant because she's seen how this sure. cycle plays she, out. She knows how this works. She is not going to uh, never give it up until she gets some assurances. He wants a son. She wants a queendom. So by 1528, 1529, you are technically in a court of two queens. Anne Boleyn has been given rooms. Catherine of Aragon is still there. They both have separate courts. Can you imagine Henry Uh, VIII just walking around like, oh, I got it made. All I can imagine are super high quality old English disses just flying from the mouth of the real queen to the interloper queen. Like Catherine always maintains graciousness. And Henry VIII still really loves her. She still mends his shirts. And that's, Anne Boleyn gets furious. <laughs> like, this is the court drama. Like, you know, h- yanks Henry by the ear. Why are you still giving your shirts to her? Like, you need to cut, like, if you're serious about this, cut it off. <sighs> so Henry takes her, takes Anne at her word and does the dickiest move of all time and not the only time he's going to do it. He packs up for summer progress, takes Anne Boleyn. This is 1529. Leaves Catherine at the court. He never sees her again. Whoa. Whoa. Ghosted. Ghosted. (laughs) Damn. Ghosted to the extreme. And they'd been married at this point of 20 years. Shit. Oh my God. Leaves her at the court with all of her ladies Boom. Done. See ya. Oh bye. My God. Sends her off to that cold fuck wet whale's castle so she can oh. live around in draft and get sick and ill for sure. the next few years. Put a pin on her. Okay. Because remember, H- Henry's trying to get that annulment right. from Rome. Right, right. How's that going, right? Well, Rudy Giuliani made it look so easy. <laughs> so it turns out it isn't that easy. Okay. And... <laughs> Henry ends up deciding, because there's a, a, an immense amount of religious reform happening. Like, this is the time of Martin Luther and the Reformation, and maybe Catholicism, you know, the Holy Roman Catholic Empire, isn't really what it's all about. Henry says, not a problem. I'm a king. I should be, not the Pope, but I should be in charge of the religion in my own country. So he goes ahead, approves his own divorce. <sighs> Handy. Handy. Breaks off from the Catholic Church, establishes the Church of England in order to marry Anne Boleyn. So now he's an Anglican. Before he does this, and we will link to this because this is Catherine of Aragon's finest moment. He puts Catherine of Aragon in a trial. And she, for as historically inaccurate as the show The Tudors is, this is the one scene they really nail where... Catherine gives up and just, ah, lays on the floor before him. God has chosen to give us to their children that he has chosen to take away. And I've been nothing but a loving and kind wife. Like, she reads him the riot act, gets up, walks out. Done. Done and done. She gets locked away. He establishes his own religion, decides to... He can't wait any longer, and he's just got to screw in. So he makes her a Marquess 
in her own right and all of the children that she may have. They go off to see the king of France. They head off in like 1532 to France. This is probably the first time they've slept together. So she's had him on pins and needles for seven years. (sighs) By January 1533, it is announced that she is pregnant. They have a ceremony. Catherine, locked in a castle. Anne Boleyn is a new queen. She is crowned in 1533, June of 1533, in a ridiculously big ceremony. And their relationship is hot cold. Henry marries her thinking, ooh, well, she'll turn into the kind, gracious, lovely queen that Catherine of Aragon was without realizing he married a firecracker. Right. She's not going to change anything of who she is now that she's the queen. She will follow custom and she tithes and does it like she follows the process of queen, but they are hot cold. She has no problem telling him what his business is. The court is fascinated with their ups and downs and backwards and forwards. I'm sure. And she is pregnant at her coronation in September of 1533. She gives birth to a girl. A girl. Mm. Elizabeth I. Oh, well. Future Queen of England. Sure. That's the redeeming part of the story. Over the course of the next few years, Anne proceeds to get pregnant a number of times, have miscarriages. So I'm going to fast forward you to 1536. This is your pub question. What was the year of three queens in England? 1536. Sorry, did you say three queens? Because you already... Three queens. Oh, All right, yeah. so we had the year of two queens. Oh, no. 1536, oh my God. the year of three queens. Oh, my God. So in winter of 1536, Catherine of Aragon, remember her? She's been sitting over in a castle. Over in a tower somewhere, yeah. Dies. Okay. Sad, <laughs> sad. But... Super sad, but God bless her. The bad part is like Catherine of Aragon's gone, but she's been forbidden from being from seeing Mary. Uh, her daughter okay. for years and years and made to sign that this divorce he treats her like crap henry starts because anne is pregnant again having an affair with another lady of anne's court named jane seymour jesus anne finds out the day of henry having a horse jousting accident where he is flat out comatose for a few hours he wakes up from that like I must procreate. Anne Boleyn has a miscarriage. Catherine of Aragon is dead. Henry decides Anne Boleyn is not the one for me. Oh my God. And we're only on two. He does the same thing. Of the six. One okay. of, yeah, we're on two. And, and we're going to get the repetition. It's bad. So I don't know. We don't know if Henry commanded Cromwell to do this, but Cromwell pretty much been spring of 1536 lining up false charges to bring against Anne Boleyn so he can, in fact, try her for treason on charges of adultery, including screwing her own brother, and behead her (laughs) in mid-May along with those co-conspirators who just happened to be part of her faction at court. Okay, well, that clears up wife number two. So as of May 18th in the year 1536, Catherine of Aragon is dead. Anne Boleyn is beheaded. Oof. Guess how many days Henry waits to marry wife number three. I mean, he probably took a good long grieving period. Of 11 days. <laughs> Shit. Of 11 days. Well, uh, you know, gotta procreate. <laughs> uh, Jane Seymour is uh-huh. his third wife, uh-huh. who is the third queen. So yes, 11 days later, Oof. marries Jane Seymour. Now, I want you to remember that last name. Jane Seymour has two brothers. They're going to become important okay. in a little while. The other thing that happens in 1536 is remember that son that he had by a mistress? Yes. See, he was planning on that son taking over because he hadn't had any sons. And Anne Boleyn gave him a daughter. Like the bastard king or something? This is like Jon Snow wins the Iron Throne? Yeah, Run? Okay. it was a possibility for some time until that kid dies in the summer of 1536 as well wow what a bad time to be alive (laughs) so jane and henry are happy ish she is no firecracker like Anne Boleyn. she's very english and just kind of she's never going to give him any kind of controversy put it that way 
<sighs> she gets pregnant. Announce the heralds, because guess what happens? Do, do, do. Henry has a son. Oh, wow. Well, hey, congratulations. That only took you a few tries. She dies 12 days later. Jesus Christ. I don't... <laughs> So here's your first half. Did she die in a nursing accident? Like what? How? Uh, she, I think sepsis. Okay. Uh, from, she died yeah. from childbirth complications because they didn't have women attend women at court. They had men who didn't know, like you'd be way better off with a midwife who sure, knew what sure. you were doing. Pregnancy and birthing procedures in medieval England were not really really cool I'm surprised given the body count we've accumulated thus far <laughs> that that's true 1537 October fall uh, Henry has a son Edward how many days later does he remarry great question cool a few years oh he actually decides to play boy it around for a little while why not he's the king and he's got an heir uh behold yeah he's got he's the king he's got an heir he can uh Oh, but wait, hold on. I haven't made him as attractive as I can. Uh, because remember from that jousting accident? Sure, where he's in a coma for a few hours. Yeah. Sure. He also badly injured his leg. Okay. And from 1536 to his death in 1547, it never healed. It just oozed pus. Oh. <laughs> so I want you to know that the Prince of England, who actually was like a new kid on the block rock star in his youth, uh, now has become a murderous, pussy, I'm trash sure, pile in a car. I'm piece. sure he smelled wonderful too with an oozing wound for years. I, so he plays around for a few years yeah, with a festering wound. Yeah, I'm sure that made him popular uh, that with the keeps ladies. keeps him in constant pain. Great. So I'm sure he's super sexy. Great. He Friendly. decides after playing around for a few years, like 1540, sure. this is happening in the late 1530s, that he's ready for a new wife. Oh. He's is, ready to. But is she ready for him? <laughs> ha, funny you should say that. So he commissions Hans Holbein and a number of other court painters okay. to go across Europe and paint the esteemed ladies of Europe. And bring back those portraits to him hmm. so he can decide upon his wife. So he's he's going to swipe right based on some <laughs> portrait artist. Medieval take Tinder. On, oh, my it's God. Totally medieval Tinder. My God. I guess. Now, one of the ones that comes back that he really digs is Christina of Milan. Okay. And Christina of Milan is no dummy at all. <laughs> and says... If I had two heads, one should surely be at the king of England's disposal. <laughs> so he already has a pretty good rep yeah. around Europe. Sure, sure. Christina of Milan swipes left for him. Yeah. Says, no, thank you. Um, if I had two heads, I would gladly give one to you. But in fact, Henry swipes right on Anne of Cleves. Okay, is that is Cleves, England? Cleves is a Germanic country. Okay, the backwater of Germany. Okay, maybe they haven't heard of his earlier things. Then she's well. He is trying to ally himself with not Catholics, and they are in the new religion. Gotcha. Okay, so it's a good political alliance for him. But also, he gets her painting, and he's like, she's kind of sweet. She looks good for alliance purposes, and his things are kind of dicey with Charles, who is in charge of the other half of Europe, who, by the way, is Catherine of Aragon's nephew. Oh, Jesus. He needs to make some friends. So the painting of Anne of Cleves comes back. Henry VIII is enchanted. <sighs> she is lovely. And it that painting is actually hanging right now in the Louvre in Paris. It's a very tiny it's little painting on a sixth floor hidden away. Lovely. Anne of Cleves is adorable. Look, she is a Germanic princess. She doesn't know the language. It's a backwater. So imagine coming from a backwater court into a refined yeah. court where there are rules and customs and you don't know the language and you're 26, but you're definitely still a virgin because your brother has been beating you up his whole, like she is ready. Cleves is crap for her. So she's like, okay, sure. England, I'll travel to England. So remember the dude, Henry VIII, who's into cosplay? Sure. She arrives in England and he decides to get dressed up with all of his buddies 
and pretend to be robbers and enter her chamber. Holy shit. And it, she expects him, because all of his wives have known his penchant for cosplay, so they play along. Ooh, I'm so... It's an act. Right. He's she doesn't... From back why, she has she no clue. Know. Okay. So she's like, uh, back off. Who are you? At this moment, he decides he is repulsed. Oh. He is like, nope, nobody, nope. He does everything he can to try to get out of this marriage. That he has gone to great lengths. That he has to, gone uh... to great lengths to medieval tent. Exactly. So, legally, he cannot get out of it. Marries Anne of Cleves. Even though he runs the religion? Even though he runs the religion, okay. there's not technically a way for him to get out of it. But once again, pulls on some sort of the hero of God religion and decides he just, I mean, the court proceedings are just crappy. I mean, he essentially says, I can't get it up. They never have sex. Like her maids are, it's, it's court scandal. However, here's your number four. So we've divorced, beheaded, died. Now we're going to divorce again. Okay. Anne of Cleves makes out like a damn bandit. Really? She's the smartest one of all of his wives. He appeals to her for a divorce. Anne of Cleves, not being an idiot by this time and maybe picking up a little bit of the language, has understood what has happened to his last three wives. She says, bro, dude, I'm totally cool with that. You have made this generous offer to be called the king's sister, and I will have the highest place at court, only below whoever you take for your next wife, and you're going to give me land and money and a scot-free sweet life with my own court getting the fuck out of Cleves. Game on. Where do I sign? Wow. Anne of Cleves. Okay. Stay alive, sister. Yeah, good. So she goes off to another part of England with her own court, has money, has land, outlives him, outlives his last wife, uh, is good friends with Elizabeth I and Bloody Mary and Edward the son. <laughs> she becomes a sister. that She's like that. She's the wacky aunt that she's, everybody yeah, she's, likes. She's the cool German aunt. <laughs> the cool German aunt comes out beautifully. There's number four. Today we brew beer. Divorced. Done. Like All right, Anna well, Cleves. Good for Anna Cleves. Psh, genius. I mean, like, how often do you need to see the writing on the wall before you're like, oh, where do I sign uh -huh. to get the whatever 6.8 Donna Hanover money? Like, yeah. just tell me where to sign to get the hell away from you. Yeah. Okay, she never remarries, but has a delightful time doing whatever she wants to on his budget for the rest of her life. And Perfect. Things are good. All right, well, there, there's one victory in this <sighs> tale. But we still have two wives to Oh, go. God. All right. Next up. So Henry is in his 40s, late-ish, mid, mid to late 40s. Festering leg wound. Festering leg wound. A dirty old man. Okay, remember Jane Seymour? She has two brothers. Yes. The Seymours are the powerful faction at court. Okay. They have replaced the Boleyns. The Boleyns have been out of power since Anne's beheading. Anne's uncle decides, hey, I have this cute little 15-year-old niece. Maybe I can find a way to gain some power. Introduces pestering pussball Henry VIII to his 15-year-old niece, Catherine Howard. Brings her to court. She's 15. She's ripe. She's oh. had lovers before in her grandmother's house. Oh, God. I mean, she is the, the, he thinks she is the rose without a thorn. It turns out that uh, she's the thorniest rose bush in England. Oh, God. Numerous affairs that she has had before she comes to court. But hey, she comes to court and she's a teenager. He's single. He's single. He really likes her. She's part of a wound or otherwise. Powerful family. He's buying her jewels and clothes, and she's like, "Yeah, okay, I can do this. I'm young. I got a lot of secret hidey holes in the basement where I can still carry on affairs." She's stupid. Okay. She's a stupid, stupid teenager. In my brain, I'm going through the sequence of events that happened to his wives, and I feel like things go badly for her. Oh, things go really badly oh. for her. So she's had like the horniest teenagerdom at her grandmother's house and all the girls used to sleep in one room and would leave the door unlocked and all the guys would. Go. So everybody had lovers 
So it's not like she did any of this in secret. So now that she's queen, everyone around her is like, well, I remember when she was 14 and got drunk at the yeah. football game behind the stands. And Right? Right. So if she had just stopped it then, if she had not carried on bringing those same guys to court, she cheats. Henry VIII does the same thing to her. See ya. Wouldn't want to be ya. She's beheaded. Oh. That's number five, people. Damn. Number five. 1540 to 1540. It's that quick. It's that done. They're married very little. It doesn't take very long. Sure. For her to be. Yeah, I, I guess mean, you. She's a young kid married to a grandpa with a pus. Like, come yeah, on. Yeah, and I, but I guess you can't cuckold a king and get away with it. Now, Henry has a son. Does sure. he need to marry again? Sure. But can't help himself because... Oops. I did it again. Patterns and repetitions. Patterns and repetitions. So Henry VIII finally uh-huh. learns a little bit. And number six survived. Here's what? the... Dun, 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 I know, chariots dun, of fire. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Here's your survival story. Okay. Ish. I survived. Ish. <laughs> Wife number six, Catherine Parr. Okay. Catherine Parr was a widow three times over because her family was from money. Oh, so she survived a lot. She was married very young to a number of old men, amassed land, property, was a caretaker to old men. Henry's eye and her like, hey, you're a widow three times. I don't need to worry about your virginity. You don't have any kids. You probably know how to take care of some war wounds. You look pretty good. She is kind and wealthy and learned. She is very much into the new religion. And go ahead and take a pen back out of that Seymour brother. Remember the Seymour brothers who are the uncle of the king-to-be Edward? Okay. Uh Who had now shifted out of power with Catherine Howard. Now they're back in power. She's in love with one of them. Ooh. And has wanted him forever. Just want you to remember him. She's in love with Edward Seymour. But when you are in love with someone and the king decides. Right. He wants you to be his bride. That's that. That's that. Henry VIII sends Edward Seymour away to Calais to babysit some piracy. I don't know. Henry VIII marries her uh, in his usual dickhead style. Um, <sighs> Sends him away. She's a good queen. She is pious. She is good. But Henry VIII almost has her hung up for treason (laughs) because as she's into the new religion, his power faction at court is trying to get her downfall to come around so there can be bride number seven. Like, it's freaking ridiculous. She plays him. She gets warmed off by this and comes back very coyly. Um, Like, oh, I thought you enjoyed the debate. I never meant to counter you. I was giving you the opposite view to think, you know, ends up saving her own neck, reunites his kids with him. She's wonderful and kind and lovely. And he finally bites it. Thank God. In 1547. (laughs) She survives. She survives him. Here's the sad part of her story. Oh, no. Now, hold on, I'm going to to wait before I tell you the sad part. So that's the rundown of the scummiest original gangster dirtbag of trashy divorces, Henry VIII. Catherine of Aragon, stubborn, pure class, 26 years, Queen of England. Anne Boleyn just got screwed. (laughs) Jane Seymour, bless her sweet little homely English heart. Anne of Cleves. (laughs) Uh, got the last laugh yeah, it really and the did. merriest life in England away from Cleves and poor Catherine Howard, poor Catherine Howard and Catherine Parr now is a widow and just doomed apparently. So England and Europe and the development, pretty much the rest of history is impacted by this story. However, as trashy divorces go, this one to me is the ultimate trashiest divorce poor Catherine ended up marrying edward seymour and he's a jerk and there was no trashy divorce because she died in childbirth trying to give birth to a first child 
Huzzah! Oh, God. Huzzah. Isn't that just... What so, a terrible it, time to have been terrible. alive. Terrible. Two divorces, two murders. <laughs> one guy... one untimely death and one outlived Yeah. Him. So yeah, how many two uh, divorces, two beheadings, one death, I'm, one I'm, survival? I think I know the answer, but like, how many garbage cans does uh, Henry VIII get for his just life of trash? I mean, he's definitely five garbage cans. Can yeah. the garbage cans be on fire? They would have to be for him. Yes, I this yes. This can is on fire. Yes, five flaming, Jeez. golden gilded trash cans. I hope you have enjoyed. The lusty, murderous tale of Henry VIII, oh the God. trashiest of all divorces, puss in a cod piece. The OG. I hate that guy. I mean, his wives divorces. are amazing. That guy, total jerk. Total jerk. All right. Well, i I think that I think that does it for us for the week. <sighs> That was exhausting. Yeah, that was that's a lot of wives to divorce and kill and. I mean, over a period of 38 years, six wives, and one of them you've got for 26 years, that's a whole lot of hustle. Yeah. Anyway, wow. thanks, everybody, for tuning in to Trashy Divorces. Yep. 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 I mean, I don't know if we have a clever sign-off. After that, I'd say stay single. And if you don't <laughs> stay single, at least keep it trashy. Don't marry Henry VIII. <laughs> don't marry Henry VIII. <laughs> thanks, everybody. We'll be back next week. Cheers, y'all. Until next time. Bye. Trashy Divorces is brought to you by Hemlock Creatives. Our music is by the extra super fabulous Ratsy. Check out her store at Ratsy's store on Instagram. Our art is by the amazing Sydney Smith. Visit her portfolio at sydneyvsmith.carbonmade.com. Learn more at TrashyDivorces.com. Join our Trashy Divorces Facebook group and follow us at Trashy Divorces on Twitter, Instagram, and we have a YouTube. And if you're enjoying the pod, tell a friend. It really helps us, and let's face it, your friends will like you better for it. Almost certainly. No, they may like you worse, but they almost certainly will like you better. It's Trash Candy. It's so much fun.